Welcome everyone. Oh my god, this is loud. Yeah, it is loud. But it's also loud because of the castles are loud. So, we're playing on Ascent. A uh, few changes from the last time we have uh, reviewed DRX on Ascent. Uh, they were playing actually three initiators. It, it was a different lineup. We had stacks and, um, and Zest on the two same characters, but we had seen a fade instead of the Killjoy. And that's a huge change because... Uh, DRX was able to be more aggressive on defense and play differently than they will play with this setup because this setup allows you to be more planted and have like maybe even mid control with an armor bot and so on. Um, but I'm actually very surprised to see that DRX changed the composition so drastically. Well, you can change, well, they only changed one agent, but it's actually a really drastic change because it's such a big role swap as well. Instead of having one more initiation tool in form of the ultimate that is so strong on this map, right? On the fade. Instead, we get a more static um, a more static character like Killjoy that is planted to a, let's say, position and doesn't uh, give the same flexibility that fade had. Now, do I think it's a mistake? I don't know. I think it's way different from what we expected and maybe the hope was to counter... Um, or sorry, to surprise Loud with the change because they expected the three initiators instead, and that will probably probably is why um, Loud was planning to attack from mid or from market a lot of times, and because they know that there's a gap because of the lack of killjoy. And let's talk about a little bit about Loud as well. If you're wondering hey, why you never they're playing Viper, Viper is a really good character on Ascent. Uh, over a year ago, I posted a guide on how to play Viper on Ascent. It's on my YouTube channel. If you go to the Valorant Guides, uh, you will be able to find it. You just go here, Valorant Guides, you open the playlist, and then you go scroll down, and you have how to play Viper in solo queue, Viper Ascent lineups, and setups, two parts. Over a year ago, I uh, posted that video. Uh, now... You can't play really Viper as a singular smoker on any map apart from Breeze and Icebox. Because that's why, like, this is just different map design. On Ascent, you still need a main smoker. Viper is just a supplemental one, supplemental one, exactly like Harbor is. That's why, for example, on Pearl, you see the setups uh, like Viper Harbor, for example. The, both of them are not main smokers because of the way that they're working. And uh, they supplement each other in this case. Here we have an Omen, because that's the main uh, character that will be the main smoker, while Viper will be the supplementary. And it's a very, um, very defensive uh, lineup, because Viper is essentially a Sentinel that is able to draw out the time from any execute by posting good one-ways with the orb and just having the ability to uh, essentially stop a push if played correctly, twice per round, right? So uh, combine that with uh, Lass's Killjoy, it gives a lot of combinations with like double damage and so on, so it's pretty rough. Um, the downside of this composition is the fact that they only have one initiator, and it's a one that doesn't even give like vision control, and it's Sky. Not a fan of personally of the Sky in almost any composition right now. Um, I always prefer to have, uh, in theory, a character that has a little bit more utility because Sky, when you think about it, has one piece of utility that doesn't really work unless it's needed, right? It's not proactive. The heal. I'm not a fan of the heals, I'm not a fan of the resurrections from Sage and so on. They're always reactive instead of proactive. Uh, but they make it work. Quanzine is a really good Sky, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's not terrible. That's not what I'm saying. I just personally don't like it. But what a crazy all right, the first wall from the Viper uh, on attack for Loud, you can see it cuts it cuts the B side in, in, in a very different manner. So what it does achieve, let's, let's, uh, let's make it happen from our perspective here. If I'm not mistaken, it goes like from here towards Market CT. Let me check. Yeah, it's more like this. Yeah, it's like this. So the goal of this wall that we'll see here from from Loud is to actually make it uncertain what is happening with the B execute. And because also DRX didn't play with the Sentinel on mid last time we have seen them play Ascent, that's also probably why this was incentivized for Loud. 
because the plan is they can go out of mid, sorry, go out of B main, not be spotted by CT, right, in this case, when the wall is activated, not spotted by stairs, not spotted by lane, and they can just walk up or fake the walk out, right, and go into the market and then make a split on A even. Like, this allows you to control the space very early, and uh, it's very nice, actually. It's a very nice wall because the B defenders are not certain of what is happening. And that's the goal of almost every attacking smoke that you will be able to do, right? Remember, if you if you would like to do it. Like, remember, attacking smokes are the ones that are, like, sticking out. This is a proper attacking smoke. Look how it looks from perspective of the defender. Now the lane player doesn't know what's going on because the players can walk out, right? And that's the same goal as of this wall. Uh, so that's essentially what they want to achieve with this. And, this would be their third grand final in and DRX has to insta-read what is happening here. And they, you, you will see that the KO goes deep into CT now and rotates instantly into market because they don't know if someone pushed out. And there are three smokes on mid, by the way. Three smokes on mid. One smoke, the one... Um, Wait, let me just change the transition because it's going to take too much time. So we're going to just use this swipe. Swipe. Here we go. So uh, the Viper has a setup with the Viper wall and then the orb is on the mid to deny information as well, right? Then another smoke from the Omen goes on short. So essentially what Loud did is used every single piece of utility that they can, the wall, the smoke, the smoke to deny vision control, right? Essentially, that's what they're trying to do. Unfortunately, the dagger tags them, or, or, or this would be, right? Did they tag it? Actually, let me check. I think it tagged them, right? It's, did they dodge it? They dodged it. But yeah, but the, the goal of the ERX, so the goal of Loud here in this round is essentially vision denial, any control from the defenders, and make them ascend what is happening. And what is very important here, what you hear, uh, what you see here, is that D-Rex reacted properly to what they see. They never seen, I'm assuming, they never seen this wall being used before, right? So there's quick thinking here. Uh, because we have no control out, out of B main and we don't know if they're going to go into market, we have to close it. That's why you see that the KO, even though he was playing like early B control here, he just popped the switch and went into market control essentially because he needs to do that because of the viper wall like they have no mid control right the kill just posted on a side and now loud is out i think this is actually a slight mistake in 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 like aspas positioning because he is out in the open when the other three players are unison this is actually a very nice example of of planning from those three players because they all are posted when this wall goes down and they look into the same direction, so they're able to execute on a player that is unsuspecting the players to be out, right? The problem is, Aspas is out on, a, on an island, and he's not certain what to do. So I feel like that, that was a mistake from him, and now he just gets into a fight. Imagine imagine if Buzz was posted on this angle area, he would have gotten like three kill on Aspas, just because of his like indecisiveness. Now the one way to counter the potential uh, push onto site, and this is a fantastic, fantastic hold by DRX, by the way. Uh, because they got posted, like Zest is playing backside B uh, and is helping Buzz as much as possible. Buzz is using the smoke bomb, essentially. That's what I'm calling it because it's a kind of like a ninja smoke bomb. You know, and disappears. And he's just holding for four seconds in that smoke. And then gets away into backside. So essentially he is like trying to play defensively as possibly. Or as long as possible. Push to the limits in map five. It all began with a pistol round and it ends in a whimper for loud. Wow. Hey Garfield. DRX pick up another pistol. And after Loud got the first four in a row, the the momentum in this series has been showcased. So yeah, the the winning the pistol round is very important for DRX. It's not just the gun round. It was a very, very nice played defense round. It was I'll be honest with you. This was really well played by Loud and was really well played by DRX. They both reacted. Uh, sorry, the, Loud had a plan and DRX reacted to it. And because of that, the run was just very nice to watch. Oh, the paranoia is good. 
Gotta be careful of the kind of so and this kind of play by the way when we were watching it live you will see this kind of play happen like at least twice in this half and the second time it's not gonna be worth it because loud will learn from it so mako tps into wine then plays with ko in that position on his right got the paranoia off and then tps back into this exact position the problem is in the future loud will get to know this from this round when it was used against an eco it's a low it, this is like a low effort round so they actually gained loud actually gained more from this round and in my eyes drx could have hit this um type of style of play against a full buy round because right now they used it for low low gain you know but we'll see of the counter attack though spam from aspas was Decent enough to drop Mako down to 32 health. No kill claim, though. Drone dodge for now. And a bit of a battle happening in... B I'm pretty upset, though, that Loud is not buying util for round two, by the way. Like, I'm really upset. Why is that a paranoia on twos? Should have been always a buy on an Omen. There's, like, absolutely no way you're not buying a paranoia after losing to someone. So that's something to keep your eye on later on. Yeah, control of that B main. Gonna be so Hello, lady. So far, it's being played. Just cutting up the side. Killjoy swapped the setup, by the way. This time she's controlling mid. I, I like the fact that Killjoy was playing a side on defense pistol round because it just gives you a bit more value. You know? The dagger used on A main, and because of that, you see the Omen rotation uh, to early to CT because they know it's not an A push in the next 10 seconds. Oof, that's such a rough. Such a rough, such a rough duel there on 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 short. Ten HP on Buzz. As Aspas was, as Les was, the year prior. Red Deagle, give me a moment. We'll finish this round. So now they lost the mid control, and they didn't close market. So they have to be posted like this aggressively, kind of towards market, as you can see. And Mako just spams with the Spectre through the smoke, gets double kill through the smoke. The thing is, it's kind of unfortunate that Mako found the eco, olds, uh, uh, eco orbs, right? Because he's the one in this particular lineup that has almost no value in his ult. And he's currently closest to the ult because of that. It's very unfortunate. Like, DRX would much rather have the ultimate on Buzz, Stacks, RB or Zest than Mako. But Mako farmed the orbs on the eco, right? It's not something you can always choose, but it's just an unfortunate thing, right? Uh, Red Deagle, thank you so much for the nine months. Welcome back, buddy. Thank you so much for the continued support. And also, it's a baby. How do we name it? Oh, listen, spread the alt orbs. Make sure that you start building up those ultimates onto everybody else. And one of the big ways that Loud won on Ascent in the past with their former squad was by absolutely dominating the defense sides and then going for very simple... No, that third fadeaway shot. <laughs> this looks different, right? They're going to be more complex just based on the composition that's being played. And it doesn't look as... First full buy from Loud. Let's see how they play it. We'll just have to wait and see. Very much. Kazin with the one flash. Unmarked and he's using it instantly. And look, Toys has the paranoia right here, right? Imagine if they got more lucky on, on the second round and Toys wouldn't have the paranoia to support the players, right? Th that's why I'm always so upset about not buying the key pieces of utility for round two after you lose pistol round. You're gonna rebuy it for round three anyway. Buy it for round two. Don't use it until, unless you think you're winning the round. The TRX on a bonus buy. And this is, the, see, this is the same play now. They know about it. Mako is now uses the same exact play that he was using against Eko. Right? And he gets the first kill, right? But it's it's like this is this is really lucky, lucky by the way, that he won this gunfight. But now look, Loud will counter that. See? Sadak just knew exactly where he's gonna TP out, spam his position. And he gets a kill on Mako. It's still positive, net positive for DRX in only this round because they traded Mako, who had a, a Spectre, for a Jet, who had a Phantom. But not only that, even though DRX lost smokes, 
loud lost the execute, which is essentially the dash onto site, right? Couldn't you fake TP out of wine and get another kill? It's like at this point, it, both are both this, both 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 positions are bad. Like, if he TPs out like that, he's most likely dead. If he doesn't TP, he's most likely dead. TP play? Turret destroyed. Dog gonna be used. Trailblazer trying to carve that path. Fragment need is good. Stopping the push for a moment. One flash a little bit early. Like they didn't go onto side. It, it feels like the Eric's forgot that they lost the jet. Like they need to run out. You know? 40 seconds. How did oh wow, that that is the kill on RB. That is so unfortunate. He just got one bullet span through the smoke. I'll be honest with you. I think I think this 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 is very unfortunate, <laughs> and this round could have been completely different if RB didn't get killed through the smoke with one bullet. It's gonna be visible on re on the replay, and this here, well, you know, gun diff, I guess. But one thing I, I I personally dislike in this approach here for the for DRX in this round, look, there's a one way on the doorway now, right? So you cannot really go through that. And Zest is on heaven, while Buzz is still holding the door for no reason. Like, he's not gonna go there for the next 15 seconds. So, in my eyes, instead of holding this, you should be just instantly going to heaven and be with your other player. Because the only way you can do this is like this. And like, okay. Like, that was completely disjointed from the play on heaven, right? Yeah, another thing that Loud are doing fantastically is that... When there isn't a smoke in A main, they're holding angles and slowly walking into the side. Look at this kill. And that's actually something the old... Uh, uh, that is... I mean, you know, good for him for spamming. That is just unfortunate for IB. That is just unfortunate for IB, man. Making sure that they post many players up as they scale into A means that you... A glimmer... Now we have a full buy from DRX. Mako fakes the teleport Same setup by the Viper, by the way. It's just the the wall for denial on B and the smoke on mid to denial vision as well. And the Arex adjust to that by posting Kildre on B to essentially counter the Viper wall with the Alamo bot. Right? You can see it here. Like this Alamo bot's role is to counter the Viper wall. That is essentially it. So it lets them stack three players from the defense on the A side. They don't have to be worried about the Viper. Proper smokes, by the way, from the defense. It doesn't leak out onto site. Behind that push. Loud happy to wait it out. Setting themselves up now for a bit of potential attempt here at the split. Sadak just holding this space. Dodging, juking, smoke drop down at the feet of Buzz, has to respect it now with a snake bite. Buzz breaking the, the window with a gun drop. Yeah, Aspas is a menace, man. Like, didn't Stax have an... No, he has no absolutely no util, man. Yeah, there was no answer. There was no answer to the dash. Like... No one counters Aspas dashes here, right? All of the three players don't have an angle to play against Aspas. It's very basic, by the way, dash. Like, the dash on top of Jenny or in front of Jenny is the most basic one that all, almost all the Jets will be doing because it gives you the ability to negate... Negate? 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 I think so, right? Um, the All the angles apart from... This one right here, to the right side of the box, right? If someone's standing here and is not exposed to short because there's a smoke maybe on double dose, well, then you can get a kill here. But in general, it's a nice angle. And now DRX has a problem, and Stax is peeking into three players. So he's insta-dead. Positioning into Jenny, and he opens it up. What is the response? Any sort of answer? The answer is no. I just wish the vote quality would be better. It looks almost as bad when I take my contacts off. Yeah. Sadak would have been dead with the old stroke dust, by the way. Had, but the way that they hold for each other, getting into the site is perfect. So, the vote quality, unfortunately, is something that will not change for a very long time. We need a new codec, like an AV1 codec, to make it better. 
Dude, this, this double kill from Zest is amazing. But this is a 2v1. And unfortunately, RB is going first. And this is a huge mistake. Like, after getting that double kill, RB... Like, this is, you know, inside Harry, right? But it's like... Actually, is it, it should be going second. Because they, they don't know... They don't know whether it's a third player. So maybe not. But the inside Harry would say... Abby should wait till Zest drops, right? I don't even know if they but they assumed, they assumed that the third player is in A main. That's why he was waiting for Abby to come out of sight. But unfortunately, the third player is in the heaven. Sorry, in hell. So but Zest is now isolated. Yeah, and he's not ready of the off angle. Konzin played it really, really nicely. But this is like, this round is like single-handedly won by Aspas Dash. And like the DRX have absolutely no way of countering it, right? And when I was doing the watch party yesterday, I was like, at some point, I said that the DRX needs to put one Nano Swarm on Jenny. And they actually did it the next round. Performances from their newer players in terms of the teamwork and the clutch ability. DRX's attack side really let them down earlier on in this tournament. It was with a different composition, but they lost to BBL. That's not the kind of team that DRX should really be losing ascent to, based on their prior record. What do you do when you don't feel like even getting up out of bed? I don't know, do you need to get out of bed? If you don't need to, stay in bed. If you need to, well, said, fuck it, I need to. <laughs> Very easy. Just you know how they say, right? When you're sad, just stop being sad and be not, and be awesome instead. Silence for about a moment. And so the round that was necessary, or at least should have been going loud's way, they do get it. Hey Zodiac. Start to build up to some big ults too. Timeout for Horst. Yeah, DRX take a timeout here. Looking game quickly. The biggest if they can hit into the site, and that means all right. Uh, another another full buy for the Rex. Um, operator on buzz, three ultimates, Louder gonna be able to set up many and three ultimates for loud as well. Three and there's a killjoy ultimate right now. So, I heavily dislike personally the ultimates from killjoy on the A site. I don't think it's of any value because it can still be on site. Uh, on B side is way easier to get value out of it, but it's also easier to destroy it. A lot of parity between these two teams. Will DRX have the answer? Let's see how the Okay, so um with the three initiator setup, by the way, um we had a we had a seen a strat that DRX was doing. Like what we have seen in in the past, like instead of KO here, we had a fade. And then K was short. And it, when when Buzz was playing Operator, his goal was to stand in this position, and he was being set up by the three initiators, which is not now exactly played the same way, but they were going to try to do it, and they're going to fail. And the reason why it would work before, it was like K.O. was using a dagger onto this wall over here. Um, Zest was doing a recon arrow on the backside of the wall here. Fade was doing an eye in the window and then prowlers like this and clears the entire entirety of this area and which then leaves RB sorry Buzz in this position with the operator just holding this angle. Now this round is gonna be very similar aspect of this round to that one with the free initiator, but they will fail because of some let's say unfortunate spacing. Yeah, they know about the arrows. They know that the that DRX most likely is gonna try to do that. So now the drone instead of the prowler, right? It doesn't clear the killjoy, and just Buzz just is not posted fast enough. He should have been posted there before that um, that drone uh, gets destroyed, but then he waits for. Um, for Zest to destroy the Killjoy turret to not sell his position. The thing is, he get, he pays the price for that hesitance, right? Like, 
that's just to some degree that's unfortunate but this was this was well uh played in when the free initiator set up and here they paid the price for not having more flexibility with one more player in b main great opening pick moving their way across and that essentially fails the entire setup. It gets five players tags, right? Yeah. Up and around stacks. Will he be the difference maker? TP into the back of the site. Reinforcements have arrived in the form of Mako being there, but they're leaving. They're leaving. Yeah, and it's it's a very nice, very nice uh and this now puts everything in the very nice play by Loud. And this is enabled by the Viper Wall, by the way. They essentially made a push, but because of the Viper Wall, they're able to go like, well, fuck it, let's go back. So they go mid, and they didn't get into any danger, even though they even though they committed to a B push, right? Because they were already here. They committed to a B push, but because of the Viper Wall, it allows them to change the position and just change their mind. Like, even though they committed, that's not something that you will be able to do a lot. And now, and now RB is just alone on site. That was the nanosome on Jenny, by the way. Spray the right click misses. Last boss does not come up with the goods. Viper's pit though might do some damage to it. Stun court. This should be a kill, surely. Kazin with the one HP. One thing that I don't understand is that Zest is here. Like the call was no actually no never mind the timing like the players from b they they already had the call to not even try retaking it but zest got the one kill and i feel like that was a mistake but they literally had the call to not retake the moment that rb died before taking two and that viper pit essentially was like nope we're not going in Personally, I don't agree with this call just because of the zest kill on the killjoy. That shouldn't have happened, and then the save is proper, but zest got that one kill, and that probably would, should have changed their mind. And they're still playing the fundamentals really, really well. And Buzz does not expect to lose his head that quickly after a recon dart and the drone are expended to set him up with the operator. And yet he still died first. Early, early molly to negate any kind of paranoia pushes out of A main. Yeah, and that's why I'm saying you just have to give loud A main every time. And that's why... I think Mako just needs to keep a main perma smoked. Jumping from RB, spots three heads. I'm honestly kind of surprised that we don't see a one way on a main. There is a one way possible possible on a main with the omen smoke. And this cancels the hit into A. And now maybe less. Oh, they're going for the re hit perhaps. Less has a lockdown. They could fake like they're going. And this round there's the nanosome on on the Jani to counter the dash. And it seems like, really unusual here. again, they don't have really any player to, like, try even counter the Aspas dash. Aspas dashes into different direction now. And RB changes nicely the position. And he gets those double kills. Like, this was really nicely done. The reposition from RB was fantastic. And even though he was very low on HP, was one bullet away from death, he played his position very well and used it use the utility from the opponents to his own advantage i don't know why they are breaking the window by the way i really don't i have no idea i don't think it's something that i would like to do uh, on defense like for no reason at all like that that window is essentially an additional trap how many rounds though do they really need on defense i can't say because i have no idea of whether loud's composition is going to trend attack or defense sided how do you use an Omen's ultimate? I don't know what it does, but what's the considered ideal for it? In in defense, it's just rotational tool. Or, like, if you gain map control, you can then TP to the position that is under your control already. That's essentially it. Alright, Killjoy ult down. Killjoy lock down. Uh, ult down. I, so, I, I don't understand this. Look, look, look. Stax is in a position 
to destroy this. Like he is able to destroy this with his with his uh, with his grenade. But instead of choosing to destroy the lockdown, he is using his grenade to block the push because of they sacrifice the hunter's fury to destroy it. I don't like this is. I know that the consistency of the grenade is lower than the ultimate, but I do think that because the 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 grenade from KO doesn't require line of sight, it just needs to be close to the to the ultimate. I think it's very worth practicing this grenade for this position. You know, like he can he can put the molly over here he can put the molly over here he can put the molly maybe i'm not certain but maybe even here and it should still destroy the lockdown you know because it doesn't matter the los doesn't matter it's all about the distance you know why not just buy sheriff and enemy has killed your ult sheriffs are insanely insanely unreliable when it comes to countering uh lockdowns you need to shoot if i'm not mistaken nine bullets through a wall or even 11 bullets through a wall to destroy the lockdown it is completely unreliable and it takes insane amount of time Forces out the hunter's fury is it too high it looks like it's directly on target so this is also like buzz gets killed twice in this position in a row and that's a huge mistake but the biggest mistake over here is this, this is something that you can apply in ranked, by the way. Look at the angle that this creates. You see how this angle is being like cut off? Buzz holds like the wall looks like the looks like this. Right? That's how he holds the angle. Like his angle. Fuck. Let's do it again. Buzz holds the angle like the yellow. And the pink are doing a wall, right? Like this. Oh my god, I'm stupid. Wait, my bad. Let's do it again. Like for Buzz, this is the angle that he holds, right? But for Kazin, the angle that he sees, Kazin sees the angle like the yellow one. So there's an angle disadvantage for Buzz just because he holds the angle improperly for himself. So he gets killed because Buzz's leg is going to be visible for Kozin faster than the other way around. Buzz will see Kozin later because of the angle disadvantage. It's not about who is closer to the angle. It's about literally the gap in this. There's literally a gap that exposes the, uh, the, the, the position of the opponent. Like, that's about it. Like, you're essentially in a one-way. You can imagine that this part of the wall, it's a one-way, and your legs are visible because you're standing in it. It doesn't matter if he's closer to the wall or not. It's about the way that it's being built. Remove four, and Buzz is watched for... Really diligent from Kawazin. See, like his head is being killed for the wall because his only leg is visible there and he's being shot because his leg is visible. Easy collection there. Like, look. Let me just stand there. See this? I'm gonna see the leg before my opponent will even see me. Like, look how much is visible. And look how this creates a one-way for this player standing on this box right here. Like this. Right? See this? This just creates a one-way. So this is just not a good spot. If you want to stand anywhere, don't stand on top of this. Stand on the lower part, you know? Like, you don't want to be on on uh on top of this while being one way with the part of the wall you know like this is just a bad spot crouching would help a little bit but also crouching would not help a little bit because crouching makes you wider target so your opponent will even see you faster than this 
So, no, just don't stand there. But now you have to get through Marco. An absolute rock, the foundation of the team in the last two maps. Trailblaze is good, though. Stunned up, I believe, onto Mako. What does he want to do? Still holding on to the paranoia. Smoked off. Now using the Seekers to try and push their way through. Heaven still being held, and they cancel out that ult. Reclear. Less. Oh, my goodness. It's getting tenuous. Less really wants to get into an advanced position here so he can fight the lockdown. And, and he instead, finds the right angle. Picks off Zest. Does RB even choose to go for it? 3v5. Yeah, and this is... And this is a proper call. There's no reason to fight this. 3v5, I don't agree with what Burn is saying. There is absolutely no reason to play a retake here. 3v5, you, you have the cash, but it's such a low chance at winning this round, it makes no sense. It feels like DRX is struggling to get a grip in terms of how allowed approaching a map. The Viper Wall is doing a great job, I think, of hiding a lot of this. And Loud are going to go hunting for these weapons. Most of the time, I, do I think like this is way co way less common in Valorant than in CS. In CS, I think you save much more because of the economy. Don't quote me because I don't play CSGO, so I don't know this by heart. But I'm almost certain that the economy favors saving a little bit more than in Valorant. Valorant had economy changes that were meant to incentivize playing less saves because of the less bonus when you when you save and you don't die in a round and unfortunately this round is literally gonna be a repeat of of zest split positioning and buzz uh, ascent positioning buzz is gonna play the same position twice in a row and he's gonna pay the price again also remember that the Viper is literally using the smoke on bottom mid every round. And Buzz kinda doesn't play into it. So he stays and he, look, and he's again killed by Cosin in exactly the same situation. It's like, you know, a few meters difference, but it's two of the same players playing in exactly the same situations. Kawazin watches it. Buzz as the first death well, yet again. He just can't find value against this. Loud know exactly where he's going to be. And that is You get full less you get full way. loss bonus if you save a city in CS. Really full? He doesn't feel and well that's re that's the reason why you see it so way time. more um saving in CS. Which I think from for entertainment purposes, I think it's awful for CS and I really like the change in Valorant because it incentivized this this saves a, a lot less. Sorry, uh, yeah, a lot less. And because we have also less on amount of rounds, so losing rounds has more impact. Play around this when Loud is so slow and diligent at the beginnings. Trailblazer. Nano swarm up close cancels it actually. Nice. Pretty nice play indeed. Snake bite into the back. Lockdown gonna be used. RB he just can't quite evacuate Zesto. We've yeah. been out. He does get one for his effort. Still, very, very, very rough down. round Make for sure. defenders just because of Buzz position. Still. It's a nice zero point clearing out B main. I think Stax and Mako should have a decent. Does it change your save as an attacker or defend in Valorant? Uh, the side doesn't change it. It's like. In Valorant you get a lower bonus uh and you don't get any cash for a defender if you say if you don't die after a, a spike is planted you don't get any bonus if you're an attacker and you don't die when the spike wasn't planted then you don't get a bonus just gotta go for it yeah. 2v3 this one is not the round to save. Or players on the side. This is such a fantastic retake, man. It's a such fantastic retake for for DRX. It's actually nuts. Like the way they played this in a 2v3, and it's mostly because of Mako. This flash from Stax is flashy, but it doesn't really matter. Because what a, what won this retake here is the paranoia to deny. Kwanzin, Kazin, Kazin, the first angle over here, and this smoke denies the trade and contact play 
for the player on the box. So, literally, this is so well played by Mako. He denies the contact play. He denies the one way, essentially, by... There are two ways that Mako could have been playing here. He could have denied the one way by putting his own smoke over here. He throws the smoke in the backside. So he jumps in and tries to nullify the one way by jumping in, right? Paranoia buys the position for the for the lane player to just peek out. And then Mako literally knows that the only angle that he has to look at is this one. Because of the smoke and because of the paranoia. So Stax gets the easy kill on Kazin, and then the the jump from Maka allows him to get a 50-50 on Aspas, and because of the smoke, it negates the, the contact play, so the omen from the, from the attackers is late to the peak, and Stax gets, Stax gets the trade. Just pay attention. Let's go one frame by frame. Maka gets into the 50-50, that 50-50 is won because of the flash as well, from uh, stacks from lane. Now the contact play is late because Twist has to run out of that smoke. He get, gets the trade, but then Stax gets the trade on him. It's so well played in this 2v3. It's actually nuts. Like, it's so hard to win a 2v3 retake like this. Without utility, it would not be possible. Like, there's no way. There's no way because Loud played it really well. But Paranoia... And, and the smoke literally enable uh, the counter to the typical crossfire positions and contact plays. This is a fantastic usage of utility at a disadvantage to dismantle potential crossfire. You know? Crossfire is good! In fact, it's excellent! What a retake from DRX! That bounce flash combined with the paranoia is everything. Oh my word, these guys have been drilling their utility combos. This is, it was good. such a nice play, exactly man. How to play in that moment. I think this was my favorite moment in the series. I agree. It, it was beautiful play. This is, this is why I like Varant. This is what I want to see. This is what I want to see from every tier one team. Those kind of understanding of how to play the game with the utility and the positioning both teams played it really well just the other team played it better this is not like a who throws better you know it's not like your typical who makes the more mistakes both teams played really well in this case they they both use utility and they both played really well it's just one team played better in this particular round i'm sorry not even particular round in this particular post plant that's what I meant. That, like, this post was played cleanly by both teams. Just one played it better. You know? Hold on to. One enemy because otherwise, this map has been getting ripped out of their hands. But the retake looks nice there. Perhaps... Perhaps playing retake B and stacking players more towards A would be the solution here. But coming out of the timeout... I don't know, watching CS matches, I don't see a problem with the saving. Well, I see. I think it's boring as fuck. I'll be honest, for me, CS matches to watch are too slow, too long, and there's too many saves. But surely they can't hold on to this. It's just to get Buzz set up with the operator. I mean, surely he doesn't get away with this. So, contact peak, dash. This is kind of similar, like, it's like, essentially like a copy, a carbon copy of the Omen play. <laughs> but with a jet. But Buzz actually paid the price a lot. He got a lot of damage, but he's alive, so it's worth it, right? Do you think Direx win if Zest play better? I don't think it matters. Like, in, in this, in this particular map, it was more about few key rounds that was thrown like, literally thrown by DRX. We're gonna get to those. Like, um... It was also unlucky. Like, round f round 3, AB gets killed through the smoke. You guys remember? And round 3, when he gets killed through a smoke with two bullets being shot right here. Like, that was straight up unlucky. But Buzz losing the, the angle in this, what we explained. Like, that's not luck. It evolved, and Buzz kind of entered that round. 
Like some of the just 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 runs should never happen, you know. Spam down onto the trailblazer, You're lucky. Yeah, stacks the dice here alone. Like that's another thing. Like look, look, he ults, gives, and then he just goes into a 50-50 fight here. Like this should not be possible. Like into like he doesn't need to fight there. No one is coming onto site. He just popped the ult. He just needs to hold the angle, right? But he goes for the 50-50 fight. And fortunately for DRX, the players on A side are not dead. So they can res him. But this could have been a collapse from Loud right here. And they could have paid the price. I'm not. I'm actually not certain why Loud are not pushing this short. I'm, I'm very not certain why, why Les is not finishing stacks there. Like, they had the two players on A side on lockdown. So it's like, I don't know. It's kind of weird. Like, I feel like this is this was really well played by Loud, but once they killed Stax, it's like, hmm, let's get, the, let's get them the rest for free. It's really odd. If he gets a second kill, by the way, it's like one round already. Does not claim the second, the trade online for two years, but, but still... Back at the site, knows that they're going to be coming, and this is the shot. Yeah, and this is again like. Unconventional <sighs> Disconnected. Stacks again is in a. Like. This is all very, very, very weird. It's a 3v1. Look. They're going to lose this, right? Am I correctly? No, never mind. Oh my god, thank god. Yeah, I. I thank god. I'm getting a secondhand stress again. Bailing his team out. After Buzz missed a pretty critical Hello, Dungi. The Iraqs are just about holding on here. There are some rounds that made my heart Zinemakin just sink, really you know? On defense. Is struggling at the moment to find the right answers. But Stax as a player still makes all the right moves. Gets himself in position to rely on his gunplay. And, and as Mako buys time, wow, that is nice. And then swinging off the recon dart that Zest throws in. Good stuff. And it draws things level at 5-5. Five, five. <laughs> it's five, still a two, great five. attack half. Yeah, it is. Feels like DRX haven't quite earned enough. I'm, I'm actually now. very happy that, that we don't have 16 rounds per half in Valorant. It would make the matches unbearable to watch. I'll be honest with you. Way too... Way too much. Dude, again, Stax gets read like a book. I'm actually not certain if there was anything to sell this position. Is is Loud just way better in this? How the hell did they get a kill on him here? How did they read this? I don't. I don't even know. Let me watch it because maybe, maybe the recon arrow. Let me check. Stax uses the dagger on B link. Is that a recon arrow being used by Zest? No. No, they just start spamming it and just get a kill on him. <laughs> One could argue that it's unlucky. But I think... Wait, he died before the paranoia was even thrown, right? Let me check. They start shooting before the paranoia is being thrown. Yeah, yeah. Like, they cannot read this out because of the paranoia. So they just start spamming it just because there's a smoke. And you could argue that there was a... Tr there was a... The eggs wanted to make a play with the paranoia on mid. But you could argue that... Loud didn't even know about the 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 the, the like tr the aggressive play on mid because nothing indicated it yet, right? By DRX and just spammed the smoke for no reason, which also makes your position really bad. Position just wow. fire it, stacks. Just a deep push, different angle. And look at that. For the the, the, look, the arrow landed, but it was like a half a second before Stax dies. I'll be honest with you. 
it, it's just a combination of a good awareness by Loud and some, let's say, very, very risky positioning on stacks. I, I, I really feel like on this map, you should not fight even for mid control on defenders. Like, it typically makes no sense. It, you have to be so, so efficient. You need to go one for zero, two for one, you know? Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense. And so far, the Rex always loses mid fights, and they're still trying it. Looks like Lado trying to fake, like it could have been just a bit of presence. Dash still online. That's why we need proper replay system. We are watching, rewatching 200 times to understand a single thing. Well, I will tell you one thing. If I had replay system, I would have been rewatching it even more times than this. It would be easier for me to understand, yes, but I would be watching even more. Look, this this round just. Oh, fuck me. You know what's funny is that Mako plays this round. I need to make a note, by the way. Uh. Like, Mako plays this round really well. I need to make some notes, wait. Uh, ascent. Retake. So I need to prep some content for DRX later on. And this round is 11. Mako play. What is very interesting is that Mako in this position plays a really bad smoke. Right? Like, the way that he put the smoke out here is actually pretty bad for the defense. You could say, you could argue that Loud didn't read into it. Because, look, if you play a defender, right? If you're standing on sight and you want to put a smoke that helps you from sight, then the smoke is not on this, on this area. Instead, it's on this area, like over here. This is where the smoke is going to be. From here. Over here. If you're playing from sight, right? But the smoke being put onto sight is essentially like, oh, they created space for us. So they didn't read that Mako did it on purpose to give himself space. So it's like he baited Loud into his position and Loud didn't read that Mako is going to be playing in this smoke. It's kind of weird because it, they, they, they're really good at reading that stuff. So I'm surprised that we're not expecting that the bad smoke by DRX has a purpose. Like, Mako is a fantastic smoke player. So there's no way that Mako makes a mistake by putting the smoke incorrectly. That means the smoke has a purpose. The better the player the easier it is to read him because he is doing the smart things with his util. And he finds value still. Like, it's nuts, man. Of course, the lineup helps, right? He should have gotten here like one, maybe two. For getting three is like nuts. But this is one of the rounds that makes me just ache because it's a 4v2. And I'll be honest with you, you cannot blame Mako for dying over here. He closes he the door. The Maybe he should have closed it a little bit earlier. And he's not holding the door till he should. And I think this is the main mistake. But you cannot blame him. He was under insane amount of mental pressure right here in this spot. But this is, this is still a mistake, so we're going to talk about it. Two players are holding A main. You see this? There's zero reasons for Mako to hold the same angle. He should be focusing on still holding the doorway. And if he would be focusing on doorway, right, he would probably single-handedly win this round with the fourth kill, right? Right here, you can see like this. There's no reason to hold this. But somehow, <laughs> somehow, somehow, this, like, it's, it's, a, it's a pain. It's, it's a pain, man. Like, the, Loud just gets those double kills, man. Here's Zest, is dying to the right side. Smoke. Pressure at his back. And RB doesn't trade any of them because it's disjointed. Like, Loud gets the perfect timing. RB wants to help Mako. And when he wants to help Mako, Zest dies. So he cannot trade Zest. So not a single oh, trade was guy. possible. But now RB felt like he needs to do something himself. Hey, 
and it just crumbles. I could argue that maybe RB should be playing time because it's 18 seconds and he stays alive. Like, he's being pushed, but he knows there's one player A main. Like, you could argue that white swinging here is a mistake. But in the player mind, it's like he needs to do this because that's about it. That's like, he's, he's fucked. He is on site alone. And it's a very, very, very hard decision to do on the spot. It's easy for me to say that he should have been playing safe because I see both positions of the team on the map, right? But he was in a really, really bad position. You know? They've got to go and break it. Have to break it, and they have retrieved it. What can Buzz do? Rifle drops down. Ugh, drops such a heartbreak of a round. And you can play, like you can, you can say, you can literally say that it's Mako who made the biggest mistake, even though he got the free kill. But it's you cannot blame any of the players because all of the decision making here in this round was literally insane amount of pressure. And like, once you, you had one than, less than one second to think right here. What, less than one second. Not a single trade was being possible because they happened in perfect timing for loud. It's such an upsetting round, man. Rippling through every part, every bone in their body. Can DRX make it 6-6? Six, six? Give us a half with the same level of parity as Fracture and give themselves a chance heading in. At the moment, it feels like everything is with loud. Managed to recover. Thrown slightly off with their footing. At least in map three, map four. Thrown from Zest. Spots a lot of players. Again, the same. You see this? Why is Stax not using the grenade to kill the lockdown? Is it so hard to be consistent with, with the lockdown over here? Uh, with the. Wait, let me check. I, I, you know, I'm. I'm, I'm uh, I'm smart because I never tried it myself, right? Let's try it out then. Is it hard to make a lineup for that? To be consistent? You want it? You want the grenade? Depending on where the TP, uh, where, where the ultimate is. If it's in here on here, you want the KO grenade to land over here. If it's in here, well, you want the grenade to land over here. So let's find both. So you just stand over here. It's F. Uh, is it even a good angle? Well, let's check. So we want it to bounce on the box. Wait, I'll take the spike and help myself with it. Because the boxes are not visible on the mini-map. So we're going to leave the spike on the position where the ultimate is. Okay, and we're going to find the lineup. So let's assume that the lockdown... Shit, I picked it up. No, never mind. Let's assume the lockdown is in this position, and that's where the grenade should land. So we're going to crouch to limit the angle. Nope. This should probably still be good enough to destroy it, but we can make it better. This is bad. Okay. Nope. I think we need to change the position. Like, you just go under the wall. I think this is just straight up better. Yeah, I like this. So this destroys the ultimate 100%. And it's consistent to do without any lineups. Well, this was fucked. So you just have to make it visible. You have to make the, the line visible over here, like this. Over here needs to be visible. You don't have to like, spot, stand on a specific spot. You, you just can't cover this line, this lane. See? Now you can't really do this because it stops on the window. But once this lane, this, this, this thing is visible here of the roof, you can make the lineup. And it's 100% destroying the ultimate in this position and this position. And if you want to, do, to make it for this, thank you, Epic Pen. Please stop. If you want to make it that other position, then you do it analogically for here. 
like this. So you don't need any lineups. And this 100% counters the Killjoy. You just check where she ults on the minimap. Hello, Dirty. Will there be a Fnatic versus Navi watch party today? No, no. But I'm going to be vote reviewing for sure. But yeah, I'm really surprised that we don't see the lockdown being destroyed by KO. There's nothing to offset this one. There's no Hunter's Fury. Just looks like he's trying to break it with shock dart. Do you give like feedback to the team or just a content creator for DRX? Well, I'm a content creator. I already created some content pieces for DRX. But DRX didn't want to publish them because they're analytical content that could have helped the other teams with prep. So we didn't post anything of what I made. And it didn't break that lockdown. Still doesn't get detained. Has to be the full retake. Does he have a Kale Kale Molly though? Yeah, he is in... We had this position twice being used. And two times Stax was using the Kale Molly. See? Is landing in the in the B main. To stop the potential push instead of destroying the, the lockdown. In the previous game... Sorry, in the previous round... Zest used his own ultimate to destroy this lockdown, but I, I argue, I would argue, that you should be using, for this, the KO grenade every time, and not use the ultimate from Sova. Now the Killjoy lockdown. No How much damage does the Molly do? Um, if I'm not mistaken, wait, let me check. It's 60 per charge. In the, in the center of it, it's even more. Wait, let me check. 19. Yeah, it's 60, 60 per charge in the center. So to lock down... Wait, does it destroy it then? I think I think it still should dude, I can't remember the patch notes change. To offset this one, there's no Hunter's Fury. Maybe that's the reason why this DRX is not using the the KO grenade. Out, and it didn't break that lockdown, still doesn't Wait. Which patch notes is that? 5.06, I think. No, that wasn't this one. Let me check. 6.0? 6.1? No. Uh, 6.0. Remember, I can be wrong as well. It's all about learning. We need to find this. Lockdown increase. Okay, this was this one. Damage multipliers. Here we go. KO. One hundred. No, it it destroys it. Yeah, it destroys it. Okay, I'm I'm right. I'm right. You can destroy it. I was like, I was worried this is gonna be fifty percent, but it's not. So, essentially, you get the real damage of the KO Grenade. 
So you need to deal... The maximum damage of the carry grenade is 240. You need to deal 200 to the Killjoy Lockdown to destroy it. Get detained. Has to be the full retake. Is that going to be planting? Oh no, not quite actually. Potential misplay. They could have had the Vipers pit online. Instead, DRX not wasting any time. Moving forwards, B main. Watch for a little bit too late. Buzz doesn't recognize the threat that was coming his way in two years. A very smart reposition. Even when he used the molly for the push, use it too early. Correct. Push them back, Sadak. Lines it up. Tumbling, falling this way, that way. It's loud on top. Marco unable to stand up to it. The crowd can feel it. How can kill you more? This way, the kill you all do 50% damage. Yeah, it's a bug. Position to head forwards into the grand finals. One half remains for them to seal the deal or for DRX to answer back. Bit of disrespect there towards the end as well as Cowan Zee lands the final kill with a shorty of all things. But they knew that he was low and still will send it down. The Yinsu on the floor has got another special guest. Maps, I... not lose. On... Let's see the pistol round. Is the same going to be true? This is like... Oh, this is a, a, not a heartbreak to watch. Squad, because I would expect Loud to be insanely defensive with this composition. But instead, they are just super aggro. Look at the B push. Just Viper and Jet just going first. Like, what the hell? You know? And it feels like if RB... Like, he doesn't peek into two players, right? RB close. But imagine if he's a little bit more aggressive with the space control right now. Because he he didn't take any space. He hears both players rotating back, but he'd moved way too late. So he's taking the space way too passive. He could have called the team to go back to B-side and take that space for free. I feel like this is a huge mistake that DRX did here, but it is what it is. But still, like, this is so tough, man. Stax just peeks alone here for no reason. It's really disjointed. But still, very well played by RB here. He just loses the important duel. He, if RB wins that duel, they win the round. But I do think that RB, I think, I, I don't know what was the, the call exactly here, but look. RB gets the full info about two players pushing out. Like he gets info about three players being on B because he gets the info about Sky and two players pushing out, right? Like DRX in this moment, because of RB position, get info three players over here. That means there's a one player most likely in this area and one player here, which indicates, right, that the Killjoy is playing on A side. Like, she's not playing B if they're playing aggressive on B. If they're playing aggressive on B, the lockdown, uh, sorry, the, the Killjoy is having a, a, a castle ascension, right? This and one. when this happens, DRX is still not committed to any pushes. So I'm really weirded out by the fact that because of the two players pushing out B, they are still pushing A. Because right here, this is the moment. This is the moment to fake the pressure, fake the pressure towards A. RB is taking space now. He should be following right here. He hears the rotation of the two players. They're making a lot of noise. So he should be taking the space as the lurker. When they are faking the pressure over here and like going over the shore, destroy destroy the turret or something, but they not commit to A side, so they go, don't go for those two lanes, lines, sorry, and they start rotating back because Kidja has now the B control. That should be most likely the play in a perfect world, right? With full information gathered and so on, Wait right? But they just commit to the to the to the side with the dash as that now there's no way of turning back. There's just no way of turning back now. Unfortunately, Stax peeks out alone right here 
when no, no one else is there to help him, Zest is still planting. And the thing is, they should just not peek. The correct play in here is Stax doesn't do anything. He's just hiding. He's, the doors are not broken, right? So the doors are still intact. Stax should be hiding in Jenny. Zest should be crouching here all the time, never peeking. And they wait for the players to push out onto site, and then they battle. Unfortunately, they give the free frags to Loud, and because of that, that retake just literally just jumps down all right now. And they're not prepped because they lost the man advantage, essentially, right? Like, RB is essentially killed because he has no impact right now, so it doesn't matter if he's alive or dead, right? And the players on site are now in terrible positioning because they lost the Jenny player, right? If, if Stax is still alive and just standing over here, that means that he's able to either have the angle over here or he just holds Jenny and the player from A main, Mako, will be able to peek out even through the smoke, peek out, just go into the smoke and peek out when those players have contact. But right now, because Stax dies, it enables all the players from Loud just jumping down onto site. It's louder, like history is on their side. Could we be witnessing an Viper was already on site. She jumped down. Like, it, look. She was on heaven. Like, she's on heaven right here. And Stax dies before she even jumps down. All of those players are now confident with the fact that they can just assault because Stax died. No one was on site. And it does, Josh feel like momentum, like history is on their side. So another thing, a long way up to the top of the mountain. More on it. Let's take a look. Ah, this is an eco. This is like really not important one from what I remember, right? The team is not. Aspas carrying the. Yeah, yeah. This was just a rundown. I think it's just insane. This is this is a very very peculiar setup that I don't understand, and hopefully we can understand it now. Look at the mini map. I don't get it. This Viper Wall, the sole reason of this Viper Wall is to retake. Because what it allows you to do is you're able to go from CT onto site without being noticed from B main, right? But it also allows you to, if the spike is planted in this area, it allows you to essentially diffuse it from behind the Viper Wall without being exposed to B backside as well, right? And if you go through market, then this wall negates the stairs, the stairs angle. So it always helps you for um, for uh, for a retake. But why on earth are you playing a retake wall on B if you have a killjoy guarding the site with all the utility set up in a way that should stop a potential push and make your opponents just fall back. So I really don't understand this setup. It's like, it's contradicting itself. You know, in most cases, this Viper Wall is going to be useless because you are not able to use it till they go onto site and the setup indicates that they want to fight them going onto site. So let's, let's see. I, I want to remind myself what happened here. At the very least, if they have a chance here, are pushing some attacking rounds through. They've got to be able to convert when they have an advantage like this. Needs to happen. Why aren't you coaching a team? Because I'm a content creator and, and a commentator. That's what I prefer to do. If I wouldn't be a content creator, streamer, casting, then I would most likely try to find a job as a coach. But finding a job as a coach is... It's so much work, I would probably not do it anyway. It's just so much work. You just you just work so much. It's actually insane. Oh shit! My bad. Yeah. A flash into middle from Kawanzine. Doesn't see anything. And Lauda going for a gamble over towards A. It's correct. Smoke drop. Paranoia. That's ripped its way across. And so Sadik does have to back away, but he's still alive inside this smoke. Eventually, those spammed out. Shots rattled. One. The crouching. I don't know, man. But the, the, the crouching from all the pro players in every single team is so weird, man. 
Smoke is not perfect, but it is what it is. Abi should never swing here, by the way. This is a position where Abi should never be even fighting here. This right here is a kill that should have never happened. Abi is in a position where he's the last player to peek. To this one. Drop down to six health. Beautiful kill. But it's just nigh impossible. We'll try to make it expensive, but he gets brought down. To this one. B3. Quite do reset. This Viper wall was done when the enemy killjoy has ult, but in this case, everybody doesn't have ult. Yeah, so it's it really doesn't make sense. Aspas is going to pick up the operator for this next round as we just take another look at how that A site worked. Aspas with the operator loves to get aggressive. This setup, look, we can literally compare it. Now, this setup of the Viper wall over here, right? This setup of the Viper Wall and the Nano Psalms combo. Now, this makes sense. Now, this makes sense because they essentially make a trap. Like, if the opponents are pushing through this Viper Wall, unlikely, but if it happens, they're on a DK and they get assaulted by this. But the Viper Wall is in front of the Killjoy utility, which allows you to either split the attention and play more spread out because first you can wall up they wait the wall out and then the second wave of utility will stop them from pushing or they disrespect the viper wall they get decayed and they go into the nanosomes this is like a good setup you know feel for when to take these aggressive timings you saw it before Maybe the previous wall was miscommunication? We will never know. Standard mid control by using the KO dagger and the recon arrow. So they get a lot of mid control with this. Also, shock dots. Like, you will see that Zest is using a shock dot lineup to clear uh, pizza or uh, mid. In, like, typically the Alamo bot is being put here because if Killjoy is playing on B, then the range of the utility makes it possible to only put the alarm bot in this area. Like here or here is the alarm bot typically, you know? Because the range is very limited if you play B side. So the shock that lineup against the Killjoy typically lands in this spot. But space in mid is gonna be gained. Aspas trying to get on the high ground approach. He's missed his chance though, because guess what, DRX? Countering the one way with the jet smoke. A very, very disjointed attack, but still a late trade, but successful one, so let's ignore it. Really good trades by DRX here. They pushed everybody from Loud out of the site. The question is, can they reposition it the good post plant spot? Uh -huh. <laughs> Alright, let's break it down because I do think this is a terrible, terrible, um terrible plant. And I will not change my mind. Because the thing is, when you play post plant, right? Uh, when you play post plant and you put this spike over here, you never get additional info when your opponents are tapping this spike. Because this is, ne this is like, this is never getting a positive um, confirmation. Like, if, the, if they are on site, they are retaking, the actual objective is just to kill those people. You will not get passive information you will not get a passive kill on a player that is trying to defuse because of the plant location right so uh the thing is it's gonna work out just because the opposing omen ints and stacks gets insanely lucky but the plant location is in my eyes really bad because it doesn't give you any advantage to play in this position and the only advantage for this position is when you play from lane if you have a defender on lane sorry attacker on lane that plays post plant that gives them a decent angle for this player and like stairs but that's never happening so it doesn't give you any advantage and if you would give for example the plant when you have the site you have so many options to plant Right? When you plant on, the, like, you have a free site. 
let's go to to the site and i'll show you we we have full control of the site we don't have to think about like enemy positioning we can do whatever we want right if you plant over in the corner you allow yourself to play in this angle and if you're in a clutch you get full information of exact position of the player and you can even pre-fire that shit right you can wall bang it from this position and have like a 90 percent hit rate because the player needs to always stand either here look either in this spot in here on he or here right so you have a very high chance of killing him it's like 90 percent kill rate if he's if you planted it in this corner right if you and if you plant here if you if you plant it if you have full control of the site if you plant it over here in this spot it also gives you a very high chance of getting kills because of the way like it's not planted for lane but if you plant on site one of the attackers needs to sacrifice his life to be to tap the spike in this position right if you have site control and you know it's it's if you have ct control and i think drx had also ct control in this round you can even plant it over here in this spot this is one of the best ones as well because it's fully open and if someone commits to tapping the spike here he is isolated as well because he's in a corner like there's so many so many plants that are just strictly better than this because this one doesn't give you any advantage like there's nothing that advantages you here because it pushes your opponents to to like go into your position so you're very unlikely to isolate kills because your mo opponents are motivated to push this position you know This is going to be on Mako, holding down in B main, smoked off now. What kind of timing can he take here? But you can see it from backside, we can always see it in spam. I, I will tell you one thing. When you have the plant in this position, not a single opponent will stick the defuse. They will just fight you. That's it. Not a single player that has an inch of a brain will try to defuse this when they didn't kill everyone backside. You're literally putting yourself at a disadvantage because you're motivating your opponents to play well. What kind of timing can he take here? He's an indicator from his team. Spam just chooses it. Sees the alarm bell drop down, doing some damage. Deeper smoke now, pushing forwards, but it's held. Covers in claims. Yeah, and and, and and two is literally just literally two is gives stacks a winning chance like this smoke is the defenders like it literally helps right now the bad plant spot is rescued by the defenders omen see like what a great a smoke. There, 58 health has to do so much repositions. Without the smoke, oh! he loses this every time. What an insane clutch by Stax. Played around the smoke beautifully and got the lineup of his dreams. Unbelievable. Wow. You are never favored there. But Josh, you made the call as well. I believe that was his smoke, right? At the back of the side that he was playing around here. No. Look likely. Yeah, honestly, I'm not exactly sure. I missed, I missed it in the moment. Either I think, way, I think it might have been too easy to smoke. Look like it in a replay, but who? Huh? I think they're confused. They think this is attacking smoke, right? Oh, no, so it doesn't matter. But the way uh, we've done it. Wait, did no. Are they? Are they? Doing some damage. Spam just chooses it. Sees the alarm bell drop down, doing some damage. Deeper smoke now, pushing forwards, but it's held. Covers in claims. Paranoia rips its way through, and it's all up to stacks. The labored spray down, dropping down still. Planted, tap of it. What a Knows great smoke. There. 58, health has to do so. Merch repositions. Clap for oh! What an insane clutch by stacks. 
No, no, he's played it, played around the, the smoke beautifully. He didn't. Uh, wow, you are never favored there. But Josh, you made the call as well. I believe that was his smoke, right? At about Wait, what? Okay, Bren is confused. He thinks it's the other team's smoke. That like, Bren is confused. <laughs> but I remember yesterday. I'm not exactly sure. I missed. I missed it in the moment. Either way, I think it might have been too easy to smoke. Too easy to smoke? What? Oh, too, he said too easy to smoke. Yeah, yeah. Just ended up being perfect for him because he could see every time the tap was a fake. Not intentionally. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Saito now corrects himself. But I, but but I remember yesterday when I was yelling during the watch party that it's a terrible, terrible plan. And then I see the smoke is like, oh my shit, they're helping the RX. And everyone else in chat is bashing me. Look, the smoke was perfect. The plant was perfect. And it felt like I was the only one to realize that this smoke was literally from the opponents and it rescued the RX. <laughs> yeah, but this, this, this is a pain in the ass. Like, this is one million percent mistake. There's literally no reason for IB to fight here. There's look at the spacing. There's no one to trade him. He's just peeking alone into a. He's peeking alone into an eco, and he literally gives away a gun. Like, as a killjoy player, that is literally like you played like you were doing an execute alone. But this one is gonna get dangerous. It was Maka smoke backside. All right, I'm gonna rewind it for you specifically, okay? But you owe me a prime sub. Look at the color from this smoke. So you owe me a sub. Stop talking bullshit, please. Like, I literally talked about this during the watch party yesterday, and I explained it again today. And sometimes the utility can be way more dangerous than a rifle. And Aspas is going to have one of those anyway. Trailblazer was broken though, so it feels like, oh, well, maybe he can't he, quite pick up that rifle. He could smoke this and probably get over to it. Especially in live it was blue, I don't know why. Because it's spectator, my friends. It's blue because it's defense. Red smokes are because it's attack. But when it's the pov of the player... Will show if it's enemies or defense. Like, guys. It's very simple. Spectator always shows the colors accordingly to sight. When the POV of the player is on the replay, then you get your normal POV when you play. Why are you bullying me? It's very fucking simple. There was no POV of stacks. The only POV of stacks... Oh my god, I have to break it down again. This is the most basic shit, and I have to explain it for the fourth time in two days. This is POV of a spectator when the game is live. The smokes from defense will always be blue. The smokes from attack will always be red. When the, when the POV goes into replay mode, so we literally see how stacks is playing, the smoke from the opponents will be red, and the smokes from his teammate, even on attack, will be blue. Okay? You owe me two subs because of the stupidity in chat right now. Thank you. That round should have been finished. Oh my goodness. It's like I'm explaining it and no one listens. A lot of it is what it is. Why are you bullying me? And sometimes the utility can be way more dangerous than a rifle. And that's why it is what it is. It is what it is. It feels like, well, maybe he can't quite pick up that rifle. He could smoke this. It is what it is. It is what it is. It's only game. But I like the decision making after the mistake from RB. Like, it's actually very important to understand that now they, you have to guard that weapon. And I like the decision from uh, from DRX here. Abi made a really, really big, big mistake, but uh, DRX rectified it. 
the back of the side. Dart's going to be making sure of that one. It so the dash engage. Right. needs to get planted. Stack. Uh, <laughs> I don't understand this. I really don't. I really don't understand the stack's ultimate here. Like, I'm really trying hard. So the but engage. they already it's got this side. They already got the side. The retake is not even starting to happen. And Stax pops the... I think it's a fat finger. I'll be honest with you. I think it's it's literally just fat finger from Stax. Almost certain it's a fat, fat finger. Fat finger. Because it makes no sense. The only explanation would be... Oh, Kildra has lockdown and you want to delay it by 10 seconds. But it only delays it by 10 seconds. And maybe even less. Maybe like 6 seconds. Right? Actually, w when you think about it, it's just like 3 seconds in reality. Like 4 seconds maybe. How many charges are left? 1. So yeah, this is going to be like 4 seconds delay of the Killjoy lockdown. And they have B control. And they are on site. So it really makes no difference. So difficult to root out of that spot. But Cowensine was looking for it last time. The timing for it is going to be so important. Good smoke. Splits that one up. Buzz was handed an easy angle. Once more, found the head. How are you grabbing that one? No, all the... I'm sorry, guys, but there's no way that you use it in that moment to nullify, like, a protection kill during lockdown or a Viper Spit. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. I, I, I honestly think it's a fat finger. From a perspective of a player, the timing of that ultimate... Made no sense. I would understand if you would have punched it the moment the opponents are actually doing the retake. Then I can fully agree it's gonna be against the Viper ultimate and against the Killjoy ultimate. But they didn't start doing anything. So that timing when they didn't even plant makes no sense. <laughs> Adam, thank you so much for the sub. Welcome back. Thank you for the three months. <laughs> a, uh, it's, it's a punish sub. <laughs> Lord, we're on Eco 2, right? Yes. And now they don't have the Stax ultimate here. Like, it's like, they would probably not have it, right? But fuck me, man. Imagine having the ultimate. Also, I, I don't care which team it is, but I heavily dislike those ultimates. Like, when you compare it, loud ultimates on B got so much value, while this ultimate on A doesn't really achieve anything. This is one of the most heartbreaking rounds for DRX ever, because they got this side for free, but they still need to use look at the amount of look at the mode, uh, look at the amount of of the utility to make sure that you can clear the gap from lockdown right 31/17kd match mvp and lost most value def https colon we'll do the vote of you after this after this vote of you thank you for sending it my friend and now and now, Buzz makes the biggest mistake of the game. And it's gonna be painful. Because he plays for this arrow. Like, look at this. He plays for this arrow. He wants to spam the smoke, right? Because of the arrow. Does he even get a tag here? But now, stacks. Actually, I remembered incorrectly. So, Buzz didn't die there fast. Never mind. I, I remember it incorrectly. But, the, but that stacks peak. That stacks peak was very, very awkward. Yeah. And the smoke from Omen is very nice. Completely dismantles the 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 attackers like i think this is this is the, the the problem here is the stacks uh position because as i'm um, sorry buzz rescues himself with the smoke bomb but stacks is stuck in dice and he's crouching now because he's still planting which is fine but after planting 
I think he's affected by paranoia. Might have missed. Not certain, actually. Just looking at the minimap right here. He's in that smoke. Wait, what? What is this? No, he's not in the smoke. Is he crouching here? I think he's fighting. I don't know, man. This is so confusing. Dude, I cannot make an assessment of this round. It's just like I cannot see the details. Ah! Molly behind him, and that's the nano swarm from the attackers. Never mind. Jesus Christ. That's the Molly from the, uh, Molly from the attackers that, that I thought is a smoke on the minimap. Do we have a pop of the replay of, of stacks? Such a chaotic round. But this smoke here on Hell allows the, 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 the retake to happen with completely eliminating the player in Hell for a certain amount of time. You know? Or drop down on him and essentially kill him while he's being isolated. Which happens. Look. They just go into the smoke and isolate him and get a kill. Very nicely done by Toys. Toys. Although, in this moment here, I think there's also a miscommunication over here because RB should be the second pick. And this is first pick. Because of the angles. Look. Let me explain what I mean. RB gets the kill. He jump speaks. It's half, so it's already fucked. But if RB doesn't re peek and waits for the swing from Zest, because of the angle, how it works, those players on defense are looking into this direction first because that's the more worrying angle for the diffuser. So there's going to be more attention towards this side of the wall. So after the jump peek from RB, if he doesn't re peek and waits for Zest to go 3 to 1, Right? They need to be very fast on this. Like, it's it, it's hard because, again, it's half diffused, it's 2v3, it's hard to make the perfect decision making in the heat of the battle. But I'm just, you know, inside Harry here, I'm making this shit up as we go. And in in a perfect world, Zest speaks first, first commits, and the RB picks after him. RB didn't use the molly on, on Spike, I think he got destroyed. Yeah, it got destroyed because of the um, my Viper Molly. Very well played by Loud, though. And I think... I think it was really well played by DRX in the beginning when they had Buzz posted in the first position over here. Like this, this position. Like that arrow, this arrow should have given him a kill on someone, but the flash fully countered him. So well played by both teams, I think. And then it's just just kind of weird for stacks. Like I'm not sure what he what happened that he died. I think Loud have had the advantage basically for the entire series. Ah, uh, DRX played too many players off site. Oh, let's see. Oh, he just peeks. And Aspas just kills him. That's it. Yeah, but there's no one, absolutely no one that helps him. See this? This is such a great angle isolation. Like, Stax is literally 1v4 in this moment. There's no one helping him. The players from A side. Sorry. So, the thing is, uh, again, in an ideal solution to this would be Stax never peeking. He just crouches here and hides, right? That's how he should be playing. Very safe. Very similar to the round that we already blamed him for in this position over here. You guys remember? Like, it was very similar. Stax dies first without any help. But if he plays safe over this, this position and plays safe over this position... That gives them more, more, more advantage because this player is dead, this player is dead, this player is dead right now. 
The only player alive on site is Stax. And he gets isolated because he overpeaks. And no one else can help him. Right? Being patient. Remember, being patient and being safe in post plant is in more cases more valuable. Specifically against teams that have good utility like this. Than just overpeaking. Because they will use everything to isolate angles. You know? The players... And he also like didn't flash, right? He had one more flash in his disposal, but he just didn't use it. Which is kind of surprising. Would have been perfect situation as well, because uh, Buzz smoked himself twice. That's very unfortunate. How are the players supposed to survive here, pushing heaven and in hell? Yeah, and then Buzz just pushes heaven because he's overheating. So, literally no one helped anyone. Stax dies because those players are basically concussed, right? Then Buzz peeks alone into heaven and gets one, which is not good, right? He, one for zero, nice. Two for one, awesome. But one for one puts a disadvantage. And this player got completely isolated, this player got isolated, this player got isolated. So it's literally... Loud by using good utility and uh, punishing overpeaks, played this retake in a. Um, it was five players alive from from DRX, right? It's five players alive from DRX. One, two, three, four, five, and uh, Loud has five players as well. But because of good utility usage and um, punishing overpeaks. They essentially played 5v1 and 5v1 and then 4v2 into a 4v2 after they killed this player. So that literally every single encounter they had, they had insane advantage, even though the players were alive in most cases. You know, it's like it was a 5v1, but players alive is 5. It is a, again, 5v1, even though 4 players are alive. And it's a 4v2, even though 3 players are alive. And then it's a 4v2, sorry, 3v2, even though... Uh, yeah, this is actually like this. So, it looked like this, the breakdown of the round. 5v1, but it's 5 players alive. 5v1, but it's 4 players alive. 4v2, but it's 3 players alive. And 3v2 with 2 players alive. That's how they use the utility and punished overpeaks. So even though it was a 5v5, they played like... Had a 5v1s, 5v1s, 5v2. Do you suggest the smoke for Under Heaven? Type an exclamation mark, worst smoke. I think the best retake smoke is the one that I recommend there. Uh, but it's like overall good. But this smoke Under Hell helps better to understand the goal. So it's like easier, easier to get... Uh, Easier to get value out of it. Twitter video where they went and stole the trophy. Ha, you know, all funny. Loud responded with, yeah, don't worry, we'll just win another one this year. I mean, the quote... Worst smoke. Exclamation mark. Worst smoke. Really try and set up a dynasty. Before we get ahead of ourselves here. Tom Buzz. Updraft play. Nana Swarm. Down less. This is a meat grinder. away from getting to another grand final there's not much that can prepare you for this your DRX might be reliving another nightmare full investment with the money 8 to 11 mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. shocked out to clear the Alama bot yeah which is very nice. It's a good zero point. Suppresses Aspas, but he's still going for the peak. This guy's confidence is unmatched. Dodges the drone. Not going to be used as well. Updraft tags him. Has to use the dash. 
Mako has still fallen, though. Oh. Loud put some pressure into Gelato, and Mako wasn't in a great spot to be able to hold on. He goes down. That seeds the whole half of the map there. What is Kawantin up to? He does not care, man. He does not care. He had to readjust his aim. And it's just shambolic for DRX. Yeah, this was really rough. Left to desperation, contact plays through mid. Seek this round is like all one by one. There's not much to break down here. The damage is done. And bounce falls to his knees. I would, Nomad, I would just recommend re-watching this VOD. It's going to be uploaded to YouTube. Why did Aspas updraft? Check. Left to desperation, contact plays through mid. Seeker's gonna be meeting them pound for pound. The re peak is there. Oh, uh, just done. standard updrafts to avoid getting killed as soon as possible. It's like a worse dash. How did Marco die this round? He was playing A main. Look, he's playing A main there, just standing there, and they're pushing into him, and he just dies. Wasn't in a great care. When he got revealed on pizza, oh, he wanted. Oh yeah, here he wanted to avoid the tag from the dr from the drone. He hears the drone. When the drone is gonna be close to him, he's gonna updraft to avoid getting tagged. Oh wait, we're gonna see this Mako play here. Yeah, just Look how Mako rough. goes down there. Loud just applying pressure everywhere on the map. As soon as DRX has never been a better one than this. The money for DRX. It's desperation. If they're able to convert this and at least bring it back, I don't know what to say. It looks primed and ready for Loud to send the uncrowned kings all the way back to their region. With how aggressively Loud have been playing, it could all be over in a flash. DRX are in. Flash forward, smoke Again, they're forward. isolated. Like, Buzz just went alone. No one was even close to following him. Right? So it's like, what do you do? 3v3. Overpeak by Zest into the one way. It's like, even though there's the trade here, like, this was insanely insanely risky and he paid the price for it and this is unfortunate timing with the viper wall because he turned it off by himself and this is just unlucky every other day every other round that rb is not under the in absolutely insane amount of pressure that he was in, in this location he gets both kills by the way most of the pro players do like most of the players do get uh, most of the pro players get a double kill here but the amount of pressure that rb is on and like the like the the, the adrenaline here is just through the fucking roof it's insanely you can look at this as a viewer and be like oh my god he with the easiest shots those are the hardest those are the hardest shots to hit online no stakes Every pro player gets a double kill here. You know? Yeah, but it's, I'll be honest with you. I think it was a fantastic map. I think it was like, there were obvious mistakes from both teams, but it was very interesting to watch. And I don't say that often about Ascent. Um, and it's mostly because of the Viper, because it changed the pacing and the way that both teams played. Uh, I think DRX was reading well at the beginning of the Viper, what she was doing on attack, but on defense. Um, but when the attack, when when Loud went onto defense, there were some bad assumptions made by DRX. Really well played utility for retakes by by Loud. And it feels like DRX just shot themselves in the foot by the over-aggressive plays on defense. I'll be honest with you. I think if DRX would play a little bit more safe 
on defense and not overpeak mid. We DRX lost three rounds on mid, essentially. Even if the round was won by DRX, but they lost the engagement on mid, I consider it like a like a punishable mistake, and it doesn't matter if they got lucky later on or not, right? So yeah. But it was very interesting, very interesting match to watch.